Christmas chaos? Well, we've got plenty of that today. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. We are currently at the Murfreesboro Christmas Parade that the Radio Club helps support every year. I'm inside the RV with quite the setup going on here, and I thought some of you might be interested in taking a look at behind the scenes. Currently, I'm looking at four radios, one laptop with two screens, so it's a little bit of chaos, and I'll kind of overlay some B-roll so you can see this better. I've got the ID50 here. This is what we were using earlier to talk to registration. So they would make a voice call, and then they would start their digital transmission. That was a CSV file of all of the registrants being transferred over RF to this station here. Now, net control or command or XCOM as we typically call it, is right across from us in this same parking lot. So it was easy to transfer that data over. Originally, we had planned to hook him into the RV's Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, he wasn't uh, getting a strong enough signal to connect to it. So we ended up having to move some of that data by USB drives or even uh, utilizing WinLink. Uh, for the last few transmissions. So that's uh, this HT here. Right behind that is the ICOM 705. That is the radio that we were using to uh, listen for all of that digital traffic. On the other side over here, I've got the Kenwood D75. This is the one that's been uh, on my person all day long. I'd originally planned to keep the ID50 on my person as well anytime I left out, but found that I got a better signal with this one connected to one of the outdoor antennas that's up on the mast uh, on the rear of the RV. But I did keep this D75 uh, with me. Uh, didn't use it really for APRS. I was running all of my APRS right here from the station. Uh, the other radio sitting over here, now we can hear one of the high school bands kicking off in the background. Uh, the other radio over here was provided to us by the city. This is one of their Motorola radios. I'm not sure exactly what this is running, P25 maybe, uh, just kind of a guess, but they did hand this off to us so that we could communicate with the city and we could hear their comms as the day went. So if they needed anything, they could use this to reach out to us or vice versa if we needed to reach out to them. Now, on the laptop, I was running multiple things. Excuse me, let me cut that radio down. And that is one of the GMRS radios sitting right over here. I verified this morning uh, that I could talk to my wife back home, and that was the only purpose of bringing the GMRS radio. So on the laptops, I have been running Yak, and that has allowed me to place all of the APRS objects that we needed on the map, and to keep track with of all of the personnel as we went through the day. We've also deployed a tracker on the Grand Marshal, and we've deployed a tracker on the Santa Float. Uh, and guys, there will be a complete after action report. If you're interested in that, be sure to sign up for my newsletter uh, down in the description below. That's typically where I share things like that instead of doing a full-blown video on it. Now, in addition to Yak, we have also used FL Digi. And FL Digi is what we were using to do the data transfer. And then we were using FL Amp in conjunction with FL Digi. And the reason we use FL Amp is because it gives us a positive, uh, a positive ID that all of the data was received with zero errors. And I think we ended up doing five data transfers this morning. Uh, out of those five transfers, and some of those had 60 and 70 blocks in them. Out of all of the transfers, though, we missed one block. And the cool thing about FL Amp is if you miss that single block, I can report that back to the transmitting station, and they can simply send me that one missing block. We don't have to do the whole transmit all over again. Now, we could have used uh, WinLink just as easily, uh, maybe in a peer-to-peer -peer format, but we've used FL Digi in the past, so we just chose to do that again this year. Last year was actually the first year we attempted all of this over FL Digi, but it has worked out fantastic for us two years in a row. Uh, other than that, uh, I am keeping up with bulletins on APRS. Uh, I'm keeping up with any incoming or outgoing messages. Now, another test we've been doing is Meshtastic, and that has been a, hit, uh, a bit hit or miss for us. 
all of the people right here close by within uh, say a quarter of a mile to a half a mile we haven't ran into any issues but we haven't done a tremendous amount of testing it was super cold this morning i think when we got here it was uh, like 17 degrees 18 degrees something along that the warmest it's going to get to today is going to be 23 degrees so everybody's got gloved hands they don't want to take their hands out of their gloves to actually key anything in on their phone uh, so not a ton of uh, testing has gone on with Meshtastic. Uh, but the limited testing we've done, it's been good uh, right here in close proximity. We did put a node up on top of the park parking deck, so that is roughly 40 feet up in the air on a mass, the same mass we use for the portable repeater and the portable uh, digipeter for APRS. However, registration is about a mile away from us. Uh, from my current location, good simplex uh, comms between us on two meters using a couple of elevated antennas, but Meshtastic just isn't making it reliably. It is making it sometime and it isn't making it at other times. We wound up using APRS messaging back and forth between us and found it to be much more reliable. But just wanted to bring you guys in and give you a little bit of a behind the scenes look at the way we set things up, the way I kind of run everything here in the RV. And uh, maybe that will help some of you if you work events like a parade or a bike race uh, in your area it might give you some ideas of how you can utilize some of the technology to be able to help you in your events. All right, for you guys that stuck around to the very end, a little bit of bonus content for you. We ran everything in the RV completely off grid, uh, allowing the 314 amp hour battery that we've got on the front of this thing to power everything. So it powered all of the radios, it powered all of the lights in the RV, and it did all of that without any issues whatsoever. In fact, I connected the RV to the truck the day before the event at around 3.30 in the afternoon, just before uh, it was starting to get dark here. Uh, I did check the battery before I disconnected it from shore power the day before. The battery was at 100%. The morning of the parade, the battery was at 96%. And when we finished up, I believe it was around 84 or 85% at the end of the day on Sunday, uh, right before we packed up to come home. So I was very pleased with the way the RV performed, uh, being able to handle everything off grid. My biggest disappointment from the day was not really radio related. Well, kind of, sort of. My biggest disappointment was I thought that uh, as close as net control was to the RV, I mean, they were probably 50 yards away, maybe. I didn't think they would have any issues connecting to the RV's Wi-Fi. And the reason I wanted them to be able to connect to my Wi-Fi was then I could build out a quick web server on my laptop and just drop those CSV files that I received from registration into a folder on the web server and allow those guys just to download that. Uh, however, uh, even though the Wi-Fi on the uh, the Wi-Fi antenna on the outside of the RV or is on the outside of the RV, they were inside a metal utility trailer, and I think that was just serving as enough of a Faraday cage that they couldn't even see my Wi-Fi. They could see the Starlink occasionally, but not enough uh, to even connect to it. So it goes to show the importance of going out and trying things before the day of the event. Now, in this case, it didn't turn out to be a big issue at all. Uh, when we first started out, I was just walking a USB thumb drive over to them and letting them download that data. Then we thought, hey, why are we getting out in the cold when we don't have to? Uh, we can just send that stuff over WinLink and do it uh, just as easily. So uh, the last two, maybe three transmissions, I just utilized WinLink and sent that data over to um, net control. But I, I was really disappointed because I thought that was going to be simple and easy to set up that Wi-Fi network and get us all ganged up on uh, one single network. And ultimately, that just didn't prove to be the case. So definitely go out there and test stuff before you decide to implement it on or implement it on the event day. If you found today's information educational or helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.